Hi guys and welcome to this video on the area of caves, rhombuses and trapeziums. Yes, I hopefully this is going to be another awesome video where you're going to learn. It's going to build on all my previous videos which you can see on mathsguru.com. What are we going to look at? The areas of caves, rhombuses and trapeziums. I think I've already said that probably three times and understand where the formulas come from. Sort of. Probably not. To be honest with you, do I need to teach you where the formulas come from? Probably not, yes. We just need to know how to use them because they're going to come up in maths all over the place. Rightio, find the area of a kite, rhombus and trapezium. So in a previous video, we looked at the idea of how to find the area of quadrilaterals. And I said, look at a right angle. And wherever you see the right angle for the quadrilaterals, multiply the two sides that it's touching. Yes, so that times that. That is for a quadrilateral. That's for parallelograms, rectangles, uh, cubes, no, not cubes, square. Cubes are three-dimensional. Right, so that is a way of doing it. So what else do we do? Oh, and we did the triangle as well. So in the previous lesson, we also looked at the idea of the triangle, and I'm going to draw it slightly differently, because, again, they will always tell you for a triangle, hopefully, a base length and a height. And again, what you notice is those two measurements there are held together by a right angle. Yes, and the right angle, I say, has got little pointy bits on it, little, um, little arrowheads. The thing with the triangle is it's that times that, definitely, but then you have to halve it. Again, the arms, uh, my arms are making the shape of a triangle, basically, if I was to join those two together. So that was a recap of the previous lesson. What have we got next? Right, well, the question was talking about rhombuses and kite. I'm going to deal with a kite first. Oops, he says drawing and highlighter, which I do ever such a lot. So let's deal with a kite first. Every time I do this, I want to sing Mary Poppins' Let's Go Fly a Kite, but I will not subject you to that today. There is a kite. Now, the great thing about a kite is it has a line of symmetry. Yes, yeah? so what's on the left-hand side of that line and what's on the right-hand side of that line are exactly the same, which will actually tell me that this angle here and this angle here are exactly the same. It does not mean the same, uh, it does not mean that is true for others. Now, when we have a kite, the uh, distances that they give us that are very, very useful are basically from that corner to that corner, that is one set of distances, and we actually like to know the distance between that corner and that corner, so opposite corners. And again, because maths is maths, we call one of them x, and we call the other one y. Now, if you've done coordinates, which you probably have, the x values are, that's, that's an x length and that's a y length, right? Because x is the horizontal, y is the vertical. All right, so how do we find the area of that kite? Well, basically, the area of a kite, and I'm just going to tell you this, is given by a half times x times y. Oh, so what you basically do is that times that and halve it again. And surprisingly, or not surprisingly, between those two lines there, there is a right angle. So that times that and halve it. ka -ching. thank you very much. Well, what about a rhombus? What does a rhombus look like, he says? All right, it's basically uh, a four-sided shape where they are parallel. They are parallel. I'm just checking my notes, by the way, guys. They are all the same length. But, but actually, that looks a bit like a kite because, in fact, it sort of is. Because what we know, if I take that distance there and that distance there, they actually meet at a right angle in the middle. All right. And so if they give me those measurements, then what do I know? I know that the area is equal to base, uh, sorry, x times y and once again, halve it. So yes, in this situation, that's x and that's y. It doesn't really make any sense, does it, x and y in there, because they're actually diagonal. So the area of a rhombus is once again a half times x times y. Now, because a rhombus is a parallelogram, if they had given me this measurement here and that height, they are exactly the same. So in that situation, I would be just doing that times that. But when they give me these diagonals, I have to use the formula there. So what other shape did I say I would deal with? A trapezium. Now, if you've watched my other video, you'll know that I have a hand signal for this. And here is an example of a trapezium. And I'm going to actually draw another more common way that they try and trick you of a trapezium. They are both trapeziums. And a trapezium is a four-sided shape with one set of parallel lines, right? Where two of the lines are parallel. 
So what we notice there is they're parallel because those arrows show they're parallel. These are parallel as well. The other two lines are not parallel and neither do they need to be, right? But the way they trick you here is they'll put a right angle in there. And lots of people, as in my previous video, I was like, find the area of this. Well, we'd split it up into a, you know, some sort of quadrilateral and triangle and add them together. Nah, you can actually find the area of these shapes quite easily. Now again, the way they do these is they use stupid letters again. So they normally call this A and B, and they'll normally have dotted lines, and they'll give you something here called H, which is the height. All right, so this here would be A for that one, that would be B, and that one there would be height. Now, how do I do this? Add times half. Add the parallels times by how far apart they are, and then half your answer, all right? Because it's got a bit of a triangle slopey bit. All right, so if I was going to write this in a more mathematical way, the area would be a half times, uh, so actually let's just do it the way that it says, add the parallels, so I do A plus B in brackets to tell us to do that first. What did I say? Add times by the height, then times that by the height, and then halve your answer. So a half of your answer. And there we go. That is actually the formula for the area of a trapezium. So looking back at what we've done here, what have we got? We've got the area of a kite and a rhombus exactly the same. Uh, find the diagonals, multiply them and halve them. Likewise with a trapezium, add times and half. Awesome. So that's the theory, believe it or not, behind this. So let's have a look at some questions in how they can actually use this stuff. Okay, so here we go. So we've always got some sort of uh, quadrilateral. It's a rhombus. It could also be a kite. Who knows? Have they given me a uh, base and a height of this thing? No, not really. But what they have done, even being a little bit sneaky, is they've joined that corner there to that corner there with a measurement of eight. And then outside, they're basically saying is if I join those points there, then what they're saying is the distance between this point here and this point here is five. Aha! So they've given me the distance between opposite corners. Ka-ching! It is a kite slash uh, rhombus. And so what I now know is that my area of this, you always have to write these formulas, is equal to a half times eight times five. Now again, I know what a half of eight is. Notice every time I say the word times, it's of. Half of eight is four. Multiply that five, five gives me 20. Is that my final answer? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nope, because we need our units. 20 meters and squared, because we're finding an area, it's floaty too. So that was example number one. And now example number two is a kite. Oh, look at that, it's a kite. Uh, what do we need to know about the area of a kite? Have they given me the two points, the opposite corners joined together measurements? Well, let's have a look. So what have we got here? We've got this one here and this one here. Ah, uh, look what they've done. They've given me the height of this thing, which is effectively the same as those two points of 20. They've joined together these opposite points here with the 10. ka -ching, I've got what I need. So I now know that my area of this is gonna be a half times 20 times 10. Again, I know what a half of 20 is. It is 10 times 10 which gives me 100, and don't forget the units, centimeters and squared. And here's my final example, example number three. Oh, what possible shape could that be? Oh, trapezium. Add times half, ka -ching. Right, so what we're gonna do, add the parallel lengths. So my area is equal to brackets, three plus 11, because I'm doing that first, add, times by how far apart they are. Well, how far apart they are, that's just that distance there, that's five. So they're gonna times that by five, and then what do I do? Half, I'm gonna half it all. All right, so having written down that, I have to do it in order. So bid mass says brackets first, so three plus 11 is 14, and then I just write down all the rest of it. I don't try and rush this, I'm not in any hurry and I get marks for working out. A half times 14 is seven, and seven times five is 35, and our units are millimeters and squared. Now, just to finish off with an additional example, don't forget we can now create composite shapes. 
So for example, I might have this shape here. All right, so we may have that composite shape there, and we've got to find the area of it. Oh, how on earth am I going to find the area of that? Well, remember, a composite shape means you've got to split it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dotted line here. And I know that that's two centimeters, that's two centimeters, that must also be two centimeters. Can you see my two shapes I've got now? Oh, I have a square and I have a trapezium. Yes, I do have a square and a trapezium. So I'm going to call that area one. Let's call that area two. So area one, which is a square, is that times that. Easy peasy. So two times two, which gives me four centimeters squared. Now, the reason they try and trick you here is because, funnily enough, when they write four measurements around the edge of a square, lots and lots of students go, oh no, the area is two times two times two times two. And that is your brain tricking you. That is the, your brain going, oh, it's got four measurements, that's normally perimeter, I'm going to work out the perimeter, and it confuses you, all right? So that's why I always draw on a right angle, and I normally highlight the two I'm going to do, right? You, you may sit there and think, oh, that's so much effort. If you want to do well in exams, put in just that little bit of effort with a highlighter and you will be phenomenal. All right, so there's my area one. Area two is going to be a trapezium. So what do we do? We add the parallels. Well, that's one of my parallels and there is another one of my parallel. Those are the two parallels I can see. So that's two plus four. Add times by how far apart they are. How far apart are they? Oh, look, they've given me that measurement there. That's the height. So times that by two. And we know that once we do this, 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 we then halve it. So halve it. Right, let's do the brackets first. 2 plus 4 is in fact 6. Write everything else down that I haven't used. We know a half of 6 is 3. And 3 times 2 is 6 centimetres and squared. Is that the end of the question? Nope, because that was the area of the two individual bits. So therefore, my total area is going to be uh, 4 plus 6 or 10 centimeters squared. ka -ching. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found it useful. I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Take care, guys. Oh, and spread the word about this. Spread, spread the word. Tell everyone. All right, bye-bye. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then, yes, there is mathsguru.com, of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye. -bye. Stay safe.